Happy New Year, everybody. Okay, Veer, why don't you get us started with the viewer pipeline and so forth? Sure. So we had a little bit of a hiccup in the viewer pipeline recently. Um, firstly, with break and uh, some stuff not going out right away during that. And secondly, with the inclusion of Uplift, which uh, has uh, uh, broken a couple of things we depended on for... Um, for getting viewers out um, that's those have been sorted out this week so uh, as of yesterday we've started getting updates uh, some some pending updates out again um, there's an update to the key mappings viewer and there's a um, there's a new project viewer for uh, love me render number five which is going to be a, another collection of uh, mostly graphics fixes um, the Jelly Doll updates viewer has been moved from project viewer to RC, so we're getting uh, that out in front of more people. Um, the other hiccup we have in viewers now is our Mac builds are broken, so uh, there's going to be a, another short pause while we get those working. Um, and uh, then we can start getting uh, fun things out for everybody in the coming year. Um, so let's see what's going on with other viewers. Uh, we've still got a um, profiles viewer, which I th think is pretty close, but there's one uh, there's one kind of UI issue we need to sort out there, um, and uh, a few a few other things in the in the works. I I can't really predict which one is going to be the next release viewer at this point, although we do have a fair amount of testing against the uh, key mappings viewer at this point, so unless we get any big showstoppers there, that... Um, let's see, I th I think that's about it for, uh, for new updates. Hopefully we'll have uh, things going a little more smoothly by the next meeting as we uh, get, our, get over the uh, kind of uplift hangover. And on the on the broader system front, we're still working on getting a few of the things that didn't quite make the the uh, the uplift deadline, um, including the map generator and uh, uh, there. I don't know. There are a few internal tools. Uh, there's one bug fix that is ultimately the reason why the land store is not working. Um, and there's a few things where we've got some performance glitches going on that are important, um, and we'll be we'll be doing that. Um, so there there are, there's lots of lots of work still going on, um, and there will be uh, a slightly higher than normal pace of changes, but we'll be. Uh, we'll be trying to return to doing the simulator roles in something more like the regular cadence um, by next week or the week after. Um, so, um, yeah, we will be spending, we, we are spending some time on group chat. We have an update to that that will probably go out sometime next week. Um, and, uh, oh, you know, I'm... So you might imagine I am getting out of the business of making predictions about whether or not the changes we make to group chat will cause everybody to think we've, we've fixed it, but we are going to very sharply limit the login, logout traffic uh, that's there. So uh, member group member lists, especially in large groups, will uh, not show everybody. Uh, it'll, it will show anybody who's talking. 
we are going to try to do a, a a real push to make some improvements to voice we're we're expecting we, I, we don't know exactly when but we are expecting a new sdk from uh vivox um and uh, we are also collecting information on how many people are still using very old versions or or of voice uh which um that are still using basically old codecs um for for those who don't know a codec is how you um encode and decode uh the bits that you put on the wire right so it's how you how you do the how how you turn the uh how you turn the noises into a into a the sound into a stream of bits um and back uh and there's a lot of ways to do that um and some linux users may have very old versions um at the moment there are no api changes although i don't think that will stay true um it is my understanding i know that at least one of our operations people routinely runs the linux runs a, a linux build of the viewer with the voice running in uh, a wine envelope and that works for them and they can use the new voice um yeah so uh but one of the things that we will probably be doing um, is telling vivox to disable some of the oldest low quality codecs um, that may break voice for some users or have been stuck on very old versions um, but uh, it will the problem and the reason we're doing that is that what happens is if you're in a a, a set of people who are in, in a shared voice channel with a set of people and somebody who has who or only supports whose voice only supports one of those old codecs everybody gets switched back down to that old low quality codec um, so it it basically drags down the quality of everybody's voice um, so if we filter it on the server side that will mean that that won't happen to people and uh, it will mean that a very small number of people will experience the fact that voice doesn't work anymore but for everybody else it will be higher quality than it has been um, so uh that's what we're doing right now is collecting uh information about how many people are using which codex um, and then we'll be able to pick where to draw that line um yeah i think any 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 actively maintained viewer that's been picking up the new sl voice from us is is not going to be affected even slightly by this um, because our ours obviously supports all the newest codex so um, we may have people who are on very old Linux viewers or, but they're probably also experiencing all sorts of graphical artifacts too, because so many other. So, um, that's just sort of a heads up. It's something that's likely to happen in this. It's, it's not, not imminent, but it's, uh, it's something we're spending some time on and we hope to spend a bunch of time working hard on. Uh, the little voice dropouts that sometimes happen in voice, right? Um, I seem to be having good response right now, but it is not uncommon to have people who you know, end of their words get chopped off or, or something. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna spend a bunch of time on that um, in the next couple of months. So. Um, So let's see. Uh, that's what I can think of off the top of my head. That's that's news. Uh, uh, so you want me to talk about the uh, UDP stuff a little bit? Uh, yes, yes. That's uh, thank you for reminding me. Good. Yes. Yeah. Why don't you take the ball? Uh, now? yeah. So uh, one thing that we have on the horizon at this point, and we don't have a definite time frame for it, is 
um, trying to get out of the business of using UDP messaging for anything that's mission critical, um, you know, sending inventory requests by UDP, for example demonstrably not a good idea and it caused us a lot of grief um so uh you know we're gonna have to kind of take this by particular cases there's still quite a few code paths where we're using udp um in some places it's for things like you know periodic object updates where you know if you miss one and you get the next one a second later that's fine too but uh, you know, for anything where it really needs to get through reliably, um, well, you know, they have, a, they have a protocol for that, and it's not UDP. Um, so uh, implications for third-party devs at this point is not really clear. Um, we may be able to change some of our messages over to just sort of use behind the scenes without uh, requiring a lot of additional work, but at some point, once that is saving, we'll be the option entirely and on board with that. So we'll keep you up to date. Um, just a heads up that this is in the right here. Here I had to go mention voice dropouts and uh, uh, fear you got you got hit by an <laughs> oh, awful no. lot. Of, uh, uh, I, I think I think the general through? theme was understandable um, and the uh, similarly we're going to be looking at at moving um, some of the chat message handling to the TCP streams as well. So, um, and in both cases, uh, we will be making those changes in our viewer and in our code base and where you can all see it. And we'll, we'll use this meeting to let you know progress on those things. But uh, at some time, Hopefully within a year uh, after we have shipped our that those changes to our default viewer, we will remove support for doing those things over UDP server side. We'll break backwards compatibility for those features. Uh, and um, we'll see how that how that how that goes. Um, but it's uh, it, it, this is all in the interest of making things more robust and reliable and um, being able to tell better what's going on. It is, it's entirely appropriate to use UDP for things like object positions, uh, movements, um, even for things like uh, individual voice packets because Getting an old one retransmitted later is not interesting because a newer one will have given you better data already. Um, but for things that should be delivered reliably, they never should have been UDP. So we're trying to retroactively fix that. Uh, so that's the general thrust. It's all in service of trying to make Second Life more predictably performant and and, and have fewer random errors that appear out of nowhere. Um, so, trying to, trying to do some quality increases as we go this year. <laughs> um, that's, a, that's a philosophical discussion that I will try to stay out of for the time being. So, um, I think that's all the big news um, that we can share with you at the moment. Uh, so the floor is open for questions. Comments, concerns, whatever. Uh, Veer, do you know what the deal is with a snapshot revamp? I'm not. I don't know anything about a snapshot revamp, sorry.
Uh, we'll have to go back and try and dig, dig that. Oh, the, oh, oh, right there in the, the 360 branch. Yeah, if 360's uh, on hold, nothing's really happening with it currently. Um, so that uh, that stuff probably hasn't been looked at for a while. Maybe we should think of, we should go back and dig up those Jiras and uh, see if there's something worth pulling out into the main viewer development branches. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, I think Callum's here. Callum, did did you get that? Hi, I did. It was so long ago now that I can't remember um, any of the differences in the main, in, you know, in, in the original snapshot and stuff. But it's yeah. there, the branch is there and is up to date and works, so... Um. I guess the question is whether that whether there are things like the uh, snapshot floater improvements that we may want to consider pulling into, or just transplanting into a, a, not, a not on hold viewer. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's see if we can dig that stuff up. We can have a look. I'd be surprised actually. The snapshot, the 360 snapshot stuff, was really entirely separate from anything else. So, but we can have a look. We have the repos. Yeah, if you have the Jira, that would help. Time flies when you're having fun around. Yes, that, that one is high on our list as well, Beck. <laughs> 